Hi, I'm Mrs. Sloan, and this is a video for AP Biology students or anybody who wants to analyze data. And I'm gonna make myself a little bit smaller. This is part of the AP Bio Equations and Formula Sheet. And um, I am making a series of videos working through each of these equations so that my students feel comfortable um, using them on the exam. So this one is going to focus on the chi-square test. And so you can see there's the chi-square equation right here in the chi-square table, and I'll be explaining that in just a moment. So first of all, on under that portion of the of the formula sheet it says statistical analysis and probability and i just want to remind you that statistical analysis is the interpretation of data to uncover patterns and then probability just looks at how likely it is to occur and i believe i've already made videos for these other three equations that you can watch so the one on the chi-square test let me kind of summarize it for you this is looking at what you might predict for your data for an experiment. And you're looking at what you observed, what you actually got, and you're looking to see is the difference so large that there must be some other variable that's causing these results to be. And so am I going to, if, the, if, if it's so large, I'm gonna to have to reject what's called my null hypothesis, um, or if the number's small enough, I can accept my null hypothesis. Now, I, just a quick reminder of what a null hypothesis is, is it says that there's no connection between the independent variable and the dependent variable of your um, particular experiment. All right, so you can watch a video to review that if you would like. So here's the equation itself. Chi-squared, uh, that's just a Greek letter. Just leave that alone. That, that's what you're solving for right here. This will equal, and this E means the sum of, and then you take what you observed, what you got, and what you thought you were gonna get, what you predicted you were gonna get. You look, get the difference of that, and you square it. And because you square it, it's always gonna be a positive number, and you put it over what you expected. And you do this for each of the outcomes that you were predicting. And so then you just sum all of those up. That's what this means, all right? So let's keep going. I'll, I'll give you an example and that'll probably make more sense to you. Now, once you have that value, that chi-squared value, the math that we just saw in the previous slide, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at this probability table. This probability table will tell you whether you should reject or accept your null hypothesis. Now. To reject, generally speaking, it's the, the line in the sand that's drawn usually is about 5% probability that this, if it would only happen 5% or less, then we got to reject this null because it's not likely to have happened um, due to chance. Um, if it's anything above 5%, then you can accept your null hypothesis. Now, you know this, if you have only two options, then your difference, your chi-square value is gonna be relatively small number, right? But if you have three, four, five, six different options, then your chi-square number is just going to be a larger number. So the probability will vary depending on what's called your degrees of freedom. And your degrees of freedom is however many categories of results you have minus one. And what you do is you look at your degrees of freedom and you try to find the chi-square value. The chi-square value is what you calculated right here. Okay, and you look on your probability table and see if it's in the accept columns or in the reject columns, all right? So let's give it a go, and I would recommend that you have a calculator of some sort and a piece of paper and a pen or pencil to really make this effective so you can be uh, doing this along with me, all right? So let's try it. So you have a choice chamber. This is a lab we do in my biology classes. It's like a Petri dish and there's two options and you put some organism in there and you see if they go to one side or the other. And let's say you put 20 roly polies in your choice chamber. Your null hypothesis is that there is no connection between your variable in this case, uh, your independent variable in this case, which is um, how the degree of light, whether it's light or dark, and your dependent variable, which would be how many roly polies are on either side. So your null hypothesis says there's no connection. Now let me explain something really quick before I go on um, any farther. Okay, so this will make sense to you. A null is oftentimes set up just so you can reject it and show that there is some connection, all right? So a null hypothesis says there's no connection, and if there is no connection, then there isn't. Your, your, uh, your number is gonna be so small that uh, the difference is gonna be so small that it's not a problem. But if it's overwhelmingly different, 
then by rejecting the null, you're accepting an alternative, you're supporting an alternative hypothesis that says there is a connection between the amount of light and roly polies that you have. All right, that's another whole video, but I wanted to take a minute. All right, so here's your dough. So your null hypothesis is that the amount of light will not impact roly-poly behavior. So if you have 20 roly-polies, then you would predict how many roly-polies. If light doesn't matter, how many would, at the end of the experiment would you expect on the light side and how many would you expect on the dark side if it has no impact? Well, if you have 20 roly-polies, you'd expect half of them to be on the light and half of them to be on the dark, so you would expect 10 and 10. But the results that you got um, after 10 minutes is that there are, actually, I changed this. Let me change this. So sorry, I forgot to change it here. Ah, 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 here we go. After 10 minutes, you found that there were only four roly polies on the light side. And so you're assuming, because you can see that there are four there, there must be 16, right, that are on the dark side. And you're wondering, is this statistically significant, this difference? Because I expected 10 and 10, but I got, four and 16. So you would use a table like this um, to quickly calculate your chi-square value. So if you want to, pause right now and see if you can do that, and then I'll help you through it. So pause. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing I would do is I would put what I expected down here. So if I had 20 roly-polies and light doesn't affect it, I'd expect 10 and 10 for a total of 20, right? And then you put what you observed, which was four, and then 16, which also equals 20, right? You take the difference and you square it, put it over what you expected, and you add those two numbers up. Okay, so now pause again if you wanna to try to do it before I show you the answer. All right, let's take a look. So I observed four, I expected 10, so I take four minus 10, and because I squared, it's still a positive number. I divide it by what I expected, and I got the value of 3.6, just for the light, okay, just for the light. But I need to do the dark as well. So there would be 16 on the dark side, 16 minus 10, take that value, square it, put it over 10, and it's 3.6. Now I'm gonna tell you, when you only have two choices, those two numbers are gonna be the same. Unless like you're expecting odds of three to one or something like that in a Punnett square, all right? So, but if the, expect, if the expected number is the same, then these two numbers are gonna be the same as well because they're gonna be off by the same amount. But that only works when you have two choices, right? So you're gonna add those two values up, 3.6 and 3.6, and you get 7.2. All right, that is your chi-squared value. Is that chi-squared value significant? Well, so now we need to do degrees of freedom. And your degrees of freedom, and I'm gonna pop you right back here, your degrees of freedom is always the number of categories minus one. So how many categories did we have? We had two. We had light and dark, right? Those were our two categories. Minus one means I have one degree of freedom. So let's go look at our table, okay? With one degree of freedom, and I'm looking for the number 7.2. Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh my gosh, it's way over here in the reject zone, right? One, if I had a 1% chance of getting a number like that, my number would have been 6.64, and this number is even bigger, so it's less of a chance, right? Less of a chance, because the bigger your chi-square number is, the smaller the probability is that you're gonna get it. It's inversely related, right? So it's, because remember, you're taking your difference from what you observed minus what you expected squared and putting over what you expected. So if that number is really big, that means you are off by a lot and you are more likely to reject your null hypothesis. Now on the college board chi-square table, this is all they do. Can you figure out what they did different? They just flip-flopped probability with degrees of freedom. So here we had one degree of freedom and they only are showing you the reject numbers, right? So if you look right here on one degree of freedom, we reject at 3.84 or any number bigger than that because the probability is so low. So they just gave you the reject numbers. So that won't be hard for you. If your number is smaller than the numbers you see here, then you're going to accept it. But if it's a larger number like these and here, then you're going to reject it. All right, so now let's do another one. And this time, again, for sure, pause the video, read through this, solve it, make your table so you can see if you understand it or not, and then I'll go over the answer with you, okay? So pause. All right, so now let me go over it with you. 
So this genetic engineer was trying to cross a tiger and a cheetah. She predicted a phenotypic outcome of the trait she, would observe, she was observing to be the following. In her ratio, she thought it would be four to three to nine, right? Now, first of all, what is that four like as a ratio? So that doesn't mean she expected only four with stripes. This is her ratio, right? So there's a total of four plus three plus nine. That's 16, right? Yep, that's 16. So she would expect four of the 16 to have stripes, three of the 16 to have spots, and nine of the 16 to have stripes and spots. So that's what she would predict. Her null hypothesis stated that the only deviation from this ratio would be due to chance. Now I'm going to tell you, if it's due to chance, then it's going to be in this accepting the null hypothesis range. Now, first of all, let's just pre-discuss what would be the degrees of freedom. Well, we have three choices, right? We have stop, spots, stripes, and spots with stripes. So how many degrees of freedom do we have? We're going to have two, right? Okay, hopefully you got that. All right, so then these were the results she observed in, um, in the offspring. There were 50 with stripes, 41 with spots, and 85 with both stripes and spots. So you would need to add that up, right, to calculate your percentage of what you would get of each one, right, the actual number. So according to the chi-square test, will she accept or reject her null hypothesis? So when you make your table, okay, this was the ratio, right? Four to three to nine out of 16. So now if I add all of this up, okay, from what I observed, I got 50 with stripes, I got 41 with spots, and I got 85 with stripes and spots. So that's 176 total. So what I expected to get this number, do you see right here? We take four divided by 16, because that would give us a percentage of what we thought should have been stripes. So four divided by 16 times the total, 176, that means I would predict 44, right? 44 of the 176, if I'm at that ratio, should have been stripes. You do the same thing for spots, you do the same thing for stripes and spots. That gives you your expected value. Okay, what comes next? Observed minus expected, right, is six. I square that, 36 over what I expected, 44. So that gives me 0.82 for stripes, okay? Then I do the same thing. Observed minus expected is eight. I square it, 64, and I put it over what I expected. This time I expected 33, right? And I, my value is 1.94. And then 85 minus 99 is minus 14. You square it, right? And it gives you a positive number over what I expected, 99, and I'm going to get 1.98. Then the sum part, right? That E, okay? I sum it up, these three values, and my chi-square value is 4.74. I need to know, is that significant? So here's yet another table how something could appear. I have three choices, so I have two degrees of freedom, right? So I'm going to look here in the two degrees of freedom range, and I'm looking for the number 4.74. Well, 4.74 with two degrees of freedom, that means that it could have happened somewhere between um, 10 and 50% of the time, right? And so, oh, sorry, I apologize for that. Here's your 5%. I'm so sorry. 4.74 means it would happen then um, greater than 5% of the time. Sorry, I wasn't reading very well there because I'm at 5.99. So it's somewhere between 5 and 10%. So I can accept that value, right? Because this is my line in the sand right here, 5.99. And the value is smaller than that, right? It's not as good as a 10% chance, if my value was 4.6, that would have been a 10% chance of happening. But it is still greater than 5%, so that is acceptable. So I can accept my null hypothesis, and I can say any variation in what I observed was just due to chance. All right. And literally, you could Google chi-square practice problems with answers and you could get a lot more that you could do. And I encourage you to do them so that you can do well on your AP exam. And I hope that was helpful for you and you're having a great day.